everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Carolyn Talks, the podcast slash YouTube channel where I talk to film and TV industry creatives about their work, the craft, and experience in the industry. And today I am joined by two lovely ladies, Jade Wu and Shuya Chang, to discuss their new film, Snakehead, directed by Evan Jackson Leong, which I screened for the 2021 Toronto International Film Festival. And so before we get into that, I'm just going to ask Jade and Shuya to say a little bit about themselves and their characters before we get into the film. So, Jay? Uh, a little bit about myself. Let's see, I've been an actor and in this business for about 50 years. Um, the character I play is Daima, who is the matriarch of the Chinatown community and also her family. Hi, I'm Suya. Um, I'm a little bit about myself. I guess I am, uh, I was born in Taiwan, but I grew up in Austria. I'm in New York now. Um, I'm an actress here. Um, my character is Sister C. She's a woman that gets smuggled into the United States in the hopes to find her daughter, but slowly rises up to become a very successful and powerful human smuggler. Mm, yes, um, I saw this film and I love this film for one very specific thing in the fact that it's about two extremely strong but very vulnerable women and i love that we get to see these two aspects of these women because normally when we see when we get a film with strong female characters we really don't get to see the vulnerable side of them and i think this film brings out uh, brings that out in both daima and sister sis so i want to talk about that part first because i think a lot of the story hinges on these two, on, on these two characteristics of these two women. So, um, for you, um, Suya, can you talk a bit about how you approach playing Sister C? Because she's physically, I call her badass because she is. She's very, she's physically strong and she's very um determined. But like, we get to see these very vulnerable moments about her when she's taught, when she's thinks, when she's thinking about her daughter and when she's remembering what her motivations are. So, can you talk a bit first about your approach to playing these two parts of her? Well, my approach is, I mean, this woman has nothing to lose, right? Her objective is just really to go to the United States with nothing and try to get her daughter back. And she had to be smart about it and think about how to get there. So first being smuggled to survive there, to survive in the United States, then have to work herself way up to, to get noticed by the Daima and then play her little chess game to get there, to get powerful enough to maybe be able to get back her daughter, right? So there's a lot of emotions in there, in this character. And I'm not a mother yet, <laughs> but yes. as a mother, as a mother, it's about family and families are very important. And uh, a mother would do anything to get to their child, to do what it takes to get her. Right, so there's just a lot of layers in it that I, I have to to ask questions and, and, and live it and you know just work on, on those parts. But at the same token, she has this toughness, right, to survive. And that's about survival, you know, to survive as a person, as a human being in a complete foreign uh, country, you know, and to put her life on the line. You know, so there's just a lot in her head to start with. So it was just a beautiful, meaty character for me to just dive in and, and just to study. So, yeah, uh, I had so much fun and I can't wait to have another role like that. <laughs> And for you, Jay, um, the thing is with Daima, Daima is a mother as well. And unlike um, Sister C, like her kids are grown. They're three grown men and they're all very different. And one of them is one, it's featured prominently in the film, which is Rambo played by um, Sung Kang. And what I thought was interesting for Daima is she doesn't understand a lot of uh, Sister C's motivation. She's looking at it from the pr of, of the perspective of a woman who's running her own empire, of a smuggler. She's she's thinking very pragmatically. She thinks that um, Sister C's motivations has to do with money and getting power. But she, but I, so I thought it was interesting that her that she as a mother doesn't realize that about Sister C. So can you talk about um, playing this character and then her interactions with Sister C? Well, you know, Daima is a very, as with all of the characters in this film, they're all extremely complex. And 
Uh, with Dai Ma, she is a leader of a community. She is the leader of her family. She's the matriarch of both of those, you know, uh, different factions. You know, and I am a mother. I'm not certainly nothing like Dai Ma, but maybe if you ask my daughter, she would probably say, "Oh, you're exactly like her." But no, I, you know, to create these characters took a lot of work. It was extremely challenging because what you're showing is that it could easily spin into caricature or stereotype. And yes, they do appear as strong, badass, you know, women, uh, which are rare roles that are offered, you know, to Asian uh, American actors, um, to, to females, period, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just not Asian. But um, to create this character was extremely challenging because of not wanting to spin into character. So I think both Suya and I had to mold these characters in a way so that the subtext of those characters came across in idiosyncrasy, in you know, uh, physical gesture. And, you know, in my younger self in real life, I was equally as active as Suya is in the film. But you know, at this age, I can't be jumping around and beating up people as she did so magnificently in the film. Uh, we don't see that. We don't see the human side of the decisions that these women have to make and the consequences they make in order to survive in this world, not necessarily in community, but in the world. It doesn't matter whether you're an illegal immigrant or if you're smuggled or if it's in a family vortex, you know, it these things happen these human dynamics happen within family within community um within dark side operations like human smuggling mm. and you mentioned um the violence which is something i was actually i, I was going to ask next because we, 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 we like i mentioned like both like um Sususu is badass like she does get violent but the thing with daima is she's very violent but in a very different way and she uses psychology on people like she like you say like physically she can't be like going around like kicking ass but what she can do is intimidate people and like you 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 convey that so well in like your body language and just in looks because like you can just look at someone you'll be like and like the person cowers and she's in a world dominated by men she's surrounded by men and she's old and she's getting older and she knows her power is limited like her power will eventually she will eventually lose it and so she has to do what she ha what she can to hold on to it while she has it and i want to talk a bit about just like conveying that violence because like when we talk about films like, a lot of people think physical violence they're always thinking about physical domination but like she just does it with a look she does it with a word. She does it with her presence. So can you just talk a bit about doing that? And for you, Sui, I want to talk about, I want you to talk next about actually op working opposite someone who's doing that kind of um, intimidation, whereas for your, your violence, your, yours is physical violence. Yeah, I think, you know, with um, violence is uh, not necessarily physical. Mm -hmm. Violence is, can be extremely psychological. And in Daima's case, she has to, she learned from the decisions she had to make and the consequences of those decisions. Uh, how does she lead a community? How does she lead an operation like this? How does she assume the responsibility of what she's doing? And she has to do it very carefully. And she has to navigate this whole system, which is male dominated, very carefully because she could have been crushed at any given time, um, probably physically, probably uh, murdered, but she wasn't because she out manipulated and out thought her male, you know, competitors. Um, how often do you see a, a woman running an operation like this? Rarely in any community, it doesn't matter what ethnicity, very rarely do you see a woman actually leading a such a, a dark you know operation like this um silence was a huge uh motivation for me as part of text because silence is more powerful than action for this character because she's older she knows she's wiser she knows that silence is a powerful tool and it's a powerful tool to 
not intim intimidate, but to control. I mean, but she controls through intimidation. And that was key to me. So I had to find out how does she walk? How does she talk? How does she pick up chopsticks? How does she drink tea? How does she, you know, have all of those idiosyncrasies? Because in those little gestures, they're not physically violent, but you're scared as hell from about her, you know? So um, that for me was the challenge. And, and, and for Suya on the other part, I, I could never have done what she did. Sister C is, is also manipulative. So let's not forget that part, right? She is younger and she is physically active and she has she had to basically show that she's strong. And that's not just physically, but also mentally. You know, she has to watch every move she does, watch every person around her. You know, and, and I think you see it very well in the movie, how, how they ping pong at each other in a way, you know, uh, watching the, the Daima. She also really actually admires Daima mm -hmm. at some time, you know, even though her objectives is to get her daughter, but she also has a liking in, in this because she, she saw the bigger picture. It's not just about smuggling people into the United States. It's also about keeping a dream alive, you know, helping others, you know. So she draw those things from positive, not necessarily from the negative, you know, what this woman actually does for other families. I think, you know, like Sister C is learning strength and how to be stronger from Daima. And Daima is learning from Sister C how, you know, how she manipulates situations that you know, normally a woman would not be engaged in these situations. And so they're each learning from each other, even though, you know, it appears that Daima has a stronghold over her. She doesn't because in the end, you'll see what happens, you know, in the film. But, you know, there there is a competition. There is this constant chess game uh, and who is, on, you know, ultimately going to say checkmate. Mm. And you'll find out when you see the film. Um, no, I agree completely because like one thing like I don't think many people, especially I should say men, don't understand about women is how we can be in um very contentious situations but still admire each other. We can admire how smart another woman is, well, even though she's our rival. And, and we get that in this film. And, and I think that's something I told Evan this and like I I also appreciate when you have male writers and directors who understand women and who understand how women interact with each other because people say oh like she's being catty she's being women but women are like nah this woman is extremely smart she's extremely slay and i might want to take her down and i might want to get her to get the promotion and get her position but i can respect how smart she is and i can respect how, how she moves and we get that with um daima sister Sue, like daima like when, like when she starts working with sister Sue, when she begins to trust her when she sees how smart and observant Sister C is, you know, in that game, the game hall where she catches the man cheating and she doesn't expose him. She just like very slightly says like, yeah, I catch you. Yeah. I see you. And Daima's like, this is someone I can trust. This is someone I can work with because she doesn't let her emotions rule her. Because like, for instance, if a man was to do a man would have probably created a Q scene and it could have turned into a shit up. But Sister C was like, no, we're just going to keep this calm. That's that's exactly that's exactly the difference. And, and you you hit the nail because there's a difference between the way males manifest their power and their rulership versus the female, because with the male, it's all physical. It's all posturing like a peacock with women. It's posturing psychologically. Right. So that's the difference. And that's what we don't see enough of, you know, in films. That's what makes Snakehead so special because they're two strong women who are posturing psychologically, you know, constantly throughout the film. And it mm. keeps the intensity going. Mm. And Suya, there, I want you to talk a bit, there's another character um, where she, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on her name. Um, where she, it, it's kind of like the opposite of her reactions and um, her interactions with Daima. And this is Rambo's girlfriend. And like they have a, and they have a struggle, but it's not very obvious until like some, some very particular scenes in the third act. And I wanted, to, and I want to get your opinion as a female actress and both of you about working in the industry because I kind of see how that could kind of happen in the in the film industry where you know like there's very limited roles for Asian American women and very 
very few of them are, I guess you could say, are not stereotyped. And like, you know, like kind of like these characters, like these women aren't stereotyped. Like we haven't, we don't see these kind of women in North American productions often. If you watch a lot of Asian content, you will see them. But for those produced in North America, it's, it's like far and few in between. Hopefully with films like this, we get more of them going for, forward. But I want you to talk a bit about how these playing these kind of characters can influences you as an actress and and how you approach roles and like basically the and navigate through the industry well i mean first i think it goes down to writers you know we need more writers that understand um those type of stories that want to write those type of story uh to normalize those stories about women in general you know so i think it, it comes down to to that that uh people accept that and that those movies are also being watched and liked and can make money, you know? Um, we need to get more support of that. Um, we, are, we have a little crack open for it, I think. You know, it, there still needs to be, a lot still needs to be done for that. So there's the struggle as an Asian actress in general, you know? Um, we just really swim in a very small pool, mm -hmm. you know? And um, it's sad, but I'm also very hopeful and, and, and it's exciting times now that there's just more Asian representations now in general. And, and I hope it will keep going, you know. Um, you just can wait and see. And I just hope there will be more content like that. And I hope this movie will also help. To get yeah, and this, you know, the, you know, to, 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 you know, uh, piggyback on that, you know, I, it's, I hope a film like Snakehead will begin to strengthen a new genre of filmmaking, which is the female genre. It's not the male genre. It's not a martial arts genre, but it's the female genre because, and it's in this case, it's, it's an Asian American genre. Uh, we have stories and we're all human. We're not invisible. This, these things take place in any ethnic community and any ethnicity and any cultural environment. We're all human. And that is what this film is all about. It's about humanism. Mm -hmm. It's about survival. It's about protection. We all know all of those aspects of life. Um, so if more stories can be opened up, if more appetites can be wet, wedded by, you know, a story like this, uh, what Evans created, great. You know, we have crazy rich Asians, we have Shang-Chi, but you know, this is not, a, you know, this is not like a superhero movie. It's not a romance comedy movie. This is a movie about human beings. And we just happen to be Asian American. Mm -hmm. hmm. No, for sure. Because um, like, I'm not Asian, but one thing I do, I, I, I relate a lot to the story in films like this, because I'm an immigrant. And this is mm -hmm. something that I've been talking more about recently, because I want people to realize that these stories do apply to especially people from other countries who move to North America because a lot of things that we experience, no matter what culture you're from, what country you're from, they are very similar. There, there's a lot of aspects of the immigrant experience that is universal to many of us. And I saw a lot of um, things that I related to in this film and in and in um, Daima's and uh, Sisters. Um, experiences because like, they have to contend with a society who doesn't necessarily understand them or even want to understand them but then they still have to be with struggles within their own enclaves within their own communities especially as women you know like if you come from societies that are very patriarchal or are you know or where women's points of view aren't necessarily as valued or maybe dismissed but you still have your like, I have to deal with being an immigrant, but I still also have to deal with being a woman and then a woman of color. And I still have to hold on to my power the way I can. And these two women have all of these situations that they're dealing with. And it's like, they can't catch a break. And I don't see either of them as a villain. Um, like some people might say like Daima's villain because of what she does, okay. but and they, to me, this, the story isn't about that. It's not a story about like good or evil. It's about these two women who are in a situation and they're making the best of it. Like. Daim, like I called um, Daima, she's like the old immigrant. She's like, she's been there, and but she's still, she's been in America, what, 40 years plus, and she's still having to learn to navigate the system of, of, of where she's living. And like, then, then there's this, who was a new immigrant. She's like looking for her daughter, but then she's learning the politics of being an immigrant in this situation. So I want you both, can you both talk about that a bit 
from your own not only not only your own personal experiences but from the experiences of the characters and how they were written well for me i mean i can relate to that character because i myself i am immigrant right my parents moved from taiwan to austria and then i moved myself to to the united states you know so uh, there's the struggles that you have when you grow up you know me in Austria, it's it's a, a full white city, right? I, I went to school and there was only maybe two other Asian people in school and I was the only one in my class. So everything was very, very different. I could learn the new language, to eat, something that's completely new to me, dress differently. So I had to go through all of that as well. For Sister C, it's, it's, it's different, but same thing you moving from from a culture to a completely different culture to have to survive there you know the struggles as you described it very well you know you have to learn about the politics being a woman then be strong and rise to the top and try to manipulate the situation it's just just human struggle in, in general and, and i think this is what this movie really shows the human struggle and how to survive and everyone has their own story, right? And I think that's where people can also relate when you are an immigrant, what you have to go through and the struggles, you know, to even get a visa, legal or illegally, you know? So we can talk so much about it for hours, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that- I think, you know, and I'm, I'm also an immigrant, uh, first generation and, you know, I didn't speak English until I was maybe five. Um, and the whole, but I was a legal, you know, immigrant. I was a documented immigrant. I didn't know the underbellies of being, uh, you know, human trafficked or the illegal, you know, immigration process or protocols and um, the dangers involved. Uh, so, you know, the immigration experience, I think is, a, is, pretty much the same, no matter how you immigrate to the country, there's an assimilation that is so challenging. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the survival, to assimilate into a world that is so foreign to you. Um, The smells, the looks, the the way you dress, the, the way that you, there's prejudice against you just by virtue of what you look like. You become a minority in this, you know, majority mainstream. Um, And it's a mainstream that doesn't know your culture, doesn't know who you are, nor do they want to know. And so that's also another survival, you know, challenge is they don't really want to know you because you're considered foreign. So how do you make, you know, stories like this make an impact is that we exist and we've existed here. I mean, Evan is sixth generation here. I mean, his family, you know, was born and raised here. Uh, his parents were, his grandparents were, you know, this is the only country they know. But then there are all the other immigrants, but we're all challenged by the same thing. We're still trying to assimilate in a world that we, that's all we know, but we're still, you know, challenged with assimilation because people don't know who we are. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully Snakehead will introduce not just the villains, but and the dark side and the underbelly, but the humanism of this particular race in this particular story with a universal element to it in terms of story and experience. Um, I hope it introduces the mainstream audience to us, all of us, you, Carolyn, to, to everybody because we're all immigrants. And the thing is, we really are all immigrants in the United States, whether you're Caucasian or any ethnicity, we're all immigrants, Mm -hmm. you know? We just don't dominate the mainstream. And Mm -hmm. so hopefully Snakehead will, you know, whet appetites to have more stories like this. Uh, And that's why I think this film is so special. Mm -hmm. Nobody tells these kinds of stories. We need more of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I know you guys have to go probably go do another um, <laughs> junket or press event. So thank, I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I wish we had more time because there's so much more we could talk about. Um, but I really appreciate you talking to me. And um, is there anything you would you would like to say before we close out? 
come see the film, come see the film and see it more of us on our future projects. You know, I mean, let's, we've got a lot of things coming down the pike. And so, you know, support us mm -hmm. support every film that you see or hear about, watch it. Yeah. Watch it, support us. Um, see you in the movie theater, hopefully. Yeah. And thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, talk <laughs> thank you. for talking to us. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks, Carolyn.